Adrian CP, thank you for a $5 super chat. I keep getting SNR warnings, even though RSSI and LQ are still really good. Should I be concerned or no? Um, that's a good question. And Captain Bry, I'm so glad you show up for my live streams because I get to ask you questions here on stream and I mostly just, I want to know the answer. Captain Bry, is the Betaflight default SNR threshold correct for Express LRS? What's the minimum SNR you would be okay with, Captain Bry? Because I've experienced this too, and I've kind of wondered. Let's look. I'm going to say that my understanding is that you don't care about SNR really because these receivers can't tell what the f floor is anyway. So you're comparing to a noise that's not really valid, but maybe that's wrong. Is that true? And and Express LRS can also go under because it's lower under the noise threshold. So. Right, but, but would I you set the SNR alarm? So the default RSNR alarm is 4, four uh, SNR of 4 dB. So if LoRa can go to like negative three dB SNR, should you set set OSD? It can be negative. RSNR alarm equals zero. You know, but if if the receiver is not actually capable of meaningfully measuring the signal to noise ratio, then then this this value is just bullshit and can be ignored. So Captain Bry. Captain Bry, for Express LRS, wait, is he using Crossfire? He doesn't say. For Express LRS, Captain Bry, I know you can talk about that. Let's see, Blunty's got this. Post it. SNR stands for signal noise ratio, blah, blah, blah. The value is of limited usefulness because the RF chip can only approximate the noise level and can only register a value so high above it, leading to this value getting clipped. Lower modulation can receive data below the noise floor, so just ignore this number really, but positive values are better. So, so one argument would be that we should just disable the SNR warning and ignore it. Another argument might be that if you set the RSNR alarm to zero, then at least you'll get an alarm when like theoretically you're in the negative and that might be meaningful in some way. But I think the takeaway might be that LQ is really the metric you should mostly be paying attention to. And, and if you SNR. want two numbers, the two he mentioned are correct. You want RSSI DBM, not RSSI yeah. as a percent, but RSSI DBM and then link quality and use yeah. those two to gauge and learn your areas and how you fly. Yeah. I mean, I still like to know SNR. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, like, is SNR just complete bullshit that should be ignored? I mean, that's the ALRS page that tells you how to use it and it says don't use it. So Yeah, but he did say positive is better. I don't know. He said positive is better. It's complete bullshit. Um, that's the short answer, though. Adrian CP, what you can do is you can go in to the OSD tab. You can go into the OSD tab, and you can go to warnings, and you can turn off the RSNR warning. See? Oh, it's underneath my head. Turn off the RSNR warning, and you won't see that again. You should be paying attention to LQ and, oops, LQ and RSSI DBM. Sounds like that description is also maybe not accurate. Bryce, going to go edit it. Captain Bryce says, we use SNR for dynamic power exclusively. So they're using it for something. So they, that's interesting. <coughs> All right. Um... That's why I love having Captain Bryce eventually will stop showing up to my live streams because he'll get tired of me asking questions and stuff. But I really appreciate you being here, Bry, because these questions come up fairly often and it's nice to be able to get answers. Jose Diaz, thank you for a $5 super chat. How to properly show Express LRS RSSI in OSD? When do I know I'm in danger? Um, Jose Diaz, you need to look first at the LQ, not the RSSI. When the LQ goes below about 90, that's to me, where I think maybe I should think carefully about continuing to fly further away. 
when the LQ goes below about 80, that's where I think, no, really, I'm at risk of losing my, my bird right now. Theoretically, Express LRS can fly down to very low LQ. If you have like an aircraft that's capable of maintaining orientation and maybe flying autonomously, you can keep your Express LRS. I've heard of people with LQ of like 15 and they were still able to get enough packets through that they could still fly the aircraft. But for an FPV drone flying in proximity, that's, your, you know, any LQ below about 90, I think is, is questionable. And an LQ below about 80, I think I would be thinking hard about turning around, coming home, punching out above the hill and so on. So just to fill in, because a couple people in chat now have been asking. So just to make it totally clear, with Express LRS, we want to have link quality as our primary stat, because that's correct. The one through a hundred tells us how many packet rates out of a hundred in the last so long, or how many what percent of packet rates are making it through successfully, and that's like our actual link. And then there's yeah. RSSI DBM, which, which is a, an idea of how well we can hear the receiver and give yeah. you an idea of how loud it is. So we don't know how loud the noise is in the area, but we know yeah. what our thresholds are, and it gives you some idea as you learn your area and how you're flying and distances. You know, as that SNR goes down, you can sort of get an idea of where you're moving. So those are the two really, I'm sorry, yeah. not SNR, RSS IDBM, and get a good idea of where you're at. Yeah. The, the problem, as Captain Bry puts it, is that each packet rate has a different acceptable SNR. Okay. And RSSI DBM. And yeah. RSSI DBM. So you can't just say 3 dB is good. Because, like, if you're at F1000, maybe you need 6 dB. But if you're at, you know, 50 hertz, LoRa, maybe you could be at negative 4 dB. And so, unless you're going to memorize that table, you can't just pick one threshold and have it be correct. You would have to pick a different threshold depending. So that's why LQ is the best one to pay attention to because it takes all that into account. Thank you for a $10 super chat. I recently built an FPV wing and I'm looking to improve VTX range using lollipops at one watt right now. Looking at a triple feed patch or helical for VRX, but what antenna should I pair with it on TX? Salem, the number one thing to keep in mind is that you must have matching uh, polarization between the uh, VRX and the VTX, left hand or right hand polarized. And the other thing you can do is you can get your VTX antenna out as far from the body as you can, and that will help. Um, I disagree. Um, let me make sure I've got the right. Yeah, D Aber the Ham, I disagree with the choice of the Axie Dual uh, for most setups. Um, the, 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 so the thing about this antenna is it has a higher gain. So it has a narrower beam pattern, okay? So if we look at this beam pattern, this green area is like the main beam, and then these red areas are nulls. And on a single axis, this green area would be wider. And the reason that matters is that for a multi-rotor that, that is going to be potentially in, in a varying orientation, we're going to want that green to pattern to be as big as possible. If we were flying with a wing that was almost always flat and level then we could consider going to a higher gain antenna uh, uh, on the on the video transmitter. But f if the orientation of the craft is not sort of locked in, then I want the lowest gain antenna as possible on a uh, on the VTX. Uh, Abraham says it's a wing. He asked about a wing. Okay, for a wing, you could make an argument that this. Uh, this VTX, this antenna is the right choice. Did he say wing? He did say wing. Oh, good eye. Uh, don't do this. This is stupid. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reminding me that this stupid thing exists. I don't know what the frick they were thinking when they made this video transmitter. This is not how any of this works, though. This was a terrible idea. And I hope no one bought it. You can't just have dual dual antennas on a transmitter. 